Here we go. Here we go. Season 11 for Andy Reid with the Kansas City Chiefs. Man. And uh, back in the AFC Championship yet again. I saw yesterday that Patrick Mahomes has never played a playoff game on the road. Ever. Every playoff game he's ever played has been at Arrowhead Stadium, and he undoubtedly will play this week. And the question is, how hampered will he be with that high ankle sprain that he suffered against the Jaguars on Saturday night? Here is Andy Reid talking about the status of Patrick Mahomes' ankle. Yeah, no, he's he's uh, worked hard um, in the treatment and is doing okay. He's going to play. So, I mean, that's, uh, um, that's his mindset. And, and then we'll just take it day by day and see how he does. The game plan part, we don't have to do much either way. I mean, they both run the same play. So, um, as as far as the reps, I, I've got to see how he how he feels. Uh, you know, when we get ready for practice. Yeah, there's no way he won't play. The question is, how right. effective right. will he be? And that high ankle sprain, it's typically a four to six week injury, but. He's not a typical human. No, he's, he's not. not a typical professional football player. Professional football players generally recover from things faster than the rest of us. But even among pro athletes, I think he's yeah he's, he's, he's in the class of himself. A right. determination. Right. He can overcome biology and science and just kind of will his way toward whatever it is he wants to do. And I think he'll he'll be good enough to play. That doesn't mean he's going to be the classic Patrick Mahomes hair on fire. No. But you know, Chris, it's almost better. Think back to Super Bowl 55. He was trying to be hair on fire Mahomes yeah. with that bad toe right. that needed surgery just three days later. This time around, he's going to have to play within himself. He's going to have to check himself. He's not going to be able to do those things. So he has to fashion an approach to this game that is different from his usual approach, and he will. And they'll have a game plan that reflects it, and he'll still do those those things he always does because he can make those throws with, with one leg. He can make those throws with no leg. We've seen him make great throws with both feet off the ground, for crying out loud. Yeah, that, that's right. I mean, we saw him throw a great touchdown pass in this one in the, you know, or what was that, the early fourth quarter, late third quarter there to score a touchdown, kind of jumping up as he's moving in the pocket, right? I mean, first off, you're right about his injury status. He's, he's Gumby. So his muscles and ligaments are different than ours. There's no question about that. And then I think when you add on two other things that I think are you can look at as maybe a little bit of a silver lining here. One, I mean, first off, he's a quarterback. We know that, right? So this is not high ankle sprains are tough. They are. Uh, but but at the same time, it's not like he's a receiver or a DB where he's got to stop and jam his foot in the ground and drive and do that. So, you know, that is makes him more capable of playing. We saw underneath the center driving out to hand off the ball is an issue because of the torque and the push there. So you might not see that as much in the game plan. But here's another thing, too, Mike. One We've, we've talked about, right, almost every other week, he, he's been great in the pocket this year. He's kind of went to the next level, maturity, patience, whatever. Andy Reid told me, check down, right? He's found the check down. He's comfortable there. So he's played the game by the book, as we've discussed a few times this year, I think better than ever before. When you really just talk about, you know, like – school of quarterbacking and going through your reads and staying in the right pocket and moving in the right pocket. So from that aspect, the, the way he grew in that department this year, but maybe it was for this moment because they, they he's, he's ready for it. And then I think when you add on top of this too, Mike, Cincinnati, one of the reasons they're three and O versus Patrick Mahomes and then one and O against Josh Allen. Now they don't let you run and scramble. Like we saw on Saturday or Sunday afternoon, right? Think about it. That was one of the things that was kind of chopped away from the Bills in their attack was that Josh Allen, and maybe the snow had a little bar part of this, he couldn't scramble around and buy time and do quite the magic because Cincinnati is very good at doing the right things to contain the mobile quarterback. So uh, I didn't mean to say so much there, but I think there's some things there that, that are positive that, they, that he can overcome. Yeah, that's right. If they're not going to let you run around anyway, well, I, I'm not yeah. able to run around. Hang in and, there. Right. And it's it's quick decisions, throw the ball, operate from the pocket, and don't do the things that, that he's so used to doing, running left, running right, running down the field, doing whatever. And I, I still think that 
I still think he'll probably have yeah, right you know, from time to time the ability to do more than we think. He may rope a dope us a little bit. Remember when Robert Sala told us a couple of years ago, right after he got the Jets job, was he'll it, get his was little that, weird that walk was it. going. It was Super Bowl, his... Super Bowl Fifty Five was right. coming, and he's like, "Don't be fooled by the old man walk." Yeah, right. And then he takes off on you, like yeah. he does that, like he's hurt between a plays. Waddle and he does, and I remember yeah. Mahomes himself <laughs> right. caught wind of those comments and got a kick out of it. But yeah, the, the, don't don't fall for it. And there could be an element of that. Uh, the, let's make him think he's not mobile until we ap- absolutely need it. And, uh, and and the other thing, too, first half last year when those two teams got together, I mean, it was 21-3. They, they, they were poised to, to blow them out. Oh, and, uh, but I don't. They don't mess up the end of the second the quarter. Who knows what happens? I mean, yeah. that was a huge moment in the football game, right? Jason Garrett talked about it in our pregame show. It was, it was frivolous, right, a little bit with the way they ended that half last year, and they left points on the board. And – you know, of course, in a game that went to overtime, that certainly hurt them and hurt the momentum and everything. You're right. So, you know, I mean, they're not going to be scared. That's why this is going to be awesome. The Chiefs have been, you know, nobody's punk in Patrick Mahomes era, right? Nobody's been like, hey, we own you, Chiefs. Like, we kind of own you. Yeah. Like, nobody's done that to them. I think there's a big part. One, they wanted the Bengals because they want the Bengals because they know they're 0-3. Two, they wanted to be home and not in the neutral site. And that's where it, there's a lot of theatrics and little storylines off of this game that I think are really cool. And I think that if Patrick Mahomes was truly 100%, it's easier to think it's time for the Chiefs to win this game. But we had that same mindset when they met in the regular season. Yeah. It's time for the Chiefs to beat the Bengals. Right. It's time for the Chiefs to beat the Bengals. And the Bengals keep beating – the Chiefs and the Chiefs, as as of the last time I checked, were a one point favorite in this game. We'll see how that moves if it moves during the week. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.